In this tutorial, we're going to look at the Edit Poly modifier. So we'll start by making a plane. And we'll go ahead and give it some length segments and width segments. And so the Edit Poly modifier, I have noticed I have edged faces turned on here, um, allows you to access the sub-objects of the geometry. So the sub-objects refer to the vertices, the edges, and the polygons, and also the outline or the border. And so to access those, um, right now I'm just using a standard primitive, but you can convert it into an edit poly object. There's a few ways to do it. If you right click on an object, you'll notice that down at the bottom there's a convert to, and you can convert to an editable mesh, which is what most geometry imports into 3ds Max as from other programs. Um, edit poly, edit patch, and NURBS. NURBS are not great in Max. You can use them, but I would I would avoid it. Edit Patch is kind of a in between between Poly and NURBS. Also, not a lot you can do with them um, in terms of the kind of modeling we're going to be doing. I would really recommend using the Edit Poly. I think it's the most stable and the most versatile geometry type in 3ds Max. There's a lot you can do with it, um, and you can always convert you know from one to the other. But um, in this case, I think we're going to use Edit Poly and look at the sub objects of that. So you can convert it to it. Or if you go to your modifier list, you'll notice that you can actually apply these as modifiers, which is really handy because then you have access to the original parameters of the geometry in case you want to change the dimensions of the plane, for example. So we're going to use an edit poly um, modifier. The other thing that's really nice is you can actually right click on these and rename them. So you can stack multiple. So it's useful sometimes to say edit poly, um, let's call this a vertex move. And in this case, we'll move some of the vertex vertices of the object. So um, it's really useful because as you start to stack these, you're going to have a bunch and bunch of edit polys stacked on top of each other. And if you don't name them, you're not going to really remember which one did which. So um, I just like to name those always. Um, there's a few things you can do. You can just do a modeling or animated. Animated means you will have access to the settings of that manipulation later. And we'll kind of talk about that um, a little bit later. And modeling just means once you execute it, it's executed. So it's it, it's actually, like if I move a vertice, it's fully moved. You can't go back from there. Um, but of course, you could always turn off that edit poly and right click and delete it if you're not happy with it. OK, so let's go in here and see what we have. If we open up the edit poly, these are the sub objects. So if you select vertices, that'll give you access oops, to all these vertices. If you select edges, those are all the edges. So each of these is an edge. Um, border is the outline, or if you have an opening, for example, that would be a border. So if I had a window, that would be a border of that window. Polygon are each of these individual faces, and then element is the entire geometry. Um, this will come into play later if you attach objects to each other. So if I attach one at poly to another, um, you can start to see what that does. So actually, let's just go ahead and do that real quick. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to make another plane, and I'll add an edit poly modifier to that as well. So now these are two separate edit polys. If I select that one, that's that edit poly, and this is a different edit poly. But if I want to attach that geometry into this geometry, I can actually go down here, hit this Attach button, and then attach the other geometry. And you can see it changes the color and the properties of the object to match the other one. And now when I select Element, these are two elements within the same geometry. So that's what attaching does. It doesn't actually join them. It just attaches them within one object. Um, so I'm just going to undo that. I just want to show that really quickly. Um, let's go in here. So these are the vertices again. Um, you can always, um, there's a lot of options within the edit poly command. So if I drag this open, uh, it just gives you a little more visibility to all those different commands you can use. So I recommend when working with edit polys to pull that uh, viewport over so you see more of the tools here. Um, you, have the, you have the animate or model, which we talked about. Um, you can also change, you can change what's selected here, or you can also do it here, same difference. Um, you can select a ring of, of vertices, so for example, let's say I select these vertices, you can grow them one selection, it just can continue to grow outward. If you have vertex or um, edge selected, you can actually you know, create a ring of selections, or if I have one, it, you can do a loop which goes in one direction. A shortcut for that, by the way, is if I hold down Shift and select one edge over, um, it, it will actually start to select those. And you can see as I move my mouse, it's, it's actually looping automatically, which is kind of neat. Um, 
and other things you can do. We're going to talk a little bit more about these commands later. These these commands, these edit edges, edit vertices, all depend on the sub object you're selecting. So those will all change depending on what uh, sub object selecting selected. Another thing you can do here is soft selection. So if we select any of these, let's select vertice for now um, and turn on soft selection. You can see it adds a kind of colored gradient around the current selected object. And what it's doing, it's basically selecting based on a weight that is referenced by this graph here. So right now the fall off is one foot eight. If I increase that fall off, you'll see that uh, that zone of influence also increases. And then if I use my move tool and move that up, you can see it actually moves depending on the weight that's affecting that particular vertice, which is also, you can see uh, clearly, um, uh, being controlled by this graph here. So you could change the, the form of that graph to, con to change how it's actually um, the soft selection is affecting the selection and the transformation of those vertices. Um, you can also paint selections or some other stuff you can do down here um, and the edit geometry types. You can also create new geometries. So for example, let's just say I had a polygon that was deleted. I'm going to turn off my soft selection for this. Um, let's say I want to create a new polygon. I can go to my polygon subobject level, select create, and then you'll get this cursor here. And if I hover over a vertice, you can see it changes. And so if I want to create a new polygon, I can hover over that vertice, left click, hover over the next one, left click, hover over the next one, left click, and then the last one. And you can see um, then when I select either right click or select the first one again, it'll actually fill that in with a new polygon. It doesn't have to be connected like I'm doing there. It's kind of snapping, but I could even just create one out here if I wanted to. Um, and that polygon is now part of this object. So if you want to start to create you know, new geometry within the edit poly, you can do that. And that's one reason I think it's a really good habit to get into whenever you do a new um, transformation within edit poly to always add a new edit poly modifier. So you can stack as many of these as you want you know, maybe I edit the vertices in that first one, and then I add polygons in the second one. It's just a good way to stay um, clear and keep these almost as layers, like geometry layers within the object. Um, once you start doing that, you might need to expand this. So I like to drag this down a little bit so I can just see a little more. Uh, and it just uh, becomes a little easier to see everything. So a few other things you can do. Um, we're going to talk later about these graphite modeling tools, which are up here. These are all edit poly modeling tools. They were once a plug-in for 3ds Max, but they're now embedded, so we'll talk about that later. Different ways of selecting objects, but those are the those are the big ones there. Create, again, attach. If you want to detach an object, so let's say this one, you want it to no longer be part of the geometry, you can actually detach it. And now you'll see that I can't select that anymore. Um, if I select out of all of this, uh, I can select that, and that's a new geometry. So if I move this, it's, it's no longer connected to this one. Um, one thing to keep in mind, whenever you're in a sub-object, if you're going to go and work on another object that's not that same edit poly, I really recommend clicking here, out of the edit poly, and then clicking out of the object. Otherwise, what happens is you, you let's say I just click out of here, um, or click a different object, it, it, it keeps that selection active. So if I then go add like a bend modifier, it's going to do some funky things. So I'd recommend just clicking out of it, so you're out of the sub-objects, and then clicking out of the geometry before you start working on other objects in the scene. 